All right, we are live. We are back in the building. It is good to be with you guys on this Tuesday evening. It is us, McCoy, and we have a very, very, very hot topic. Yes. And, yes. and, this, and this topic, it does deserve some attention, and it does warrant the fact that we got to talk about it. And we're going to talk about it from a perspective where we are going to break some stuff down and let you guys know what is it, what does it mean to be culturally appreciative versus culturally appropriate. Hopefully I use the right terms because mm -hmm. I know my English grammar, it sucks sometimes. So I, I am able to admit that. I don't have the best grammar. English was my worst subject because still is my worst subject. So, you know, moving on. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tonight's topic, cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. And who wants to lead us off, get us going, and kind of break it down, break down the ice and the barriers, and go from there. Uh, um, okay, I'll start. Go for it. How Toby was breathing, it sounded like he was going to say something. <laughs> right? It was, it was just, I, it's a lot. To, it's a lot. So I need to get my thoughts together. Okay, I got you. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um. So, like how I define it as as another person whose English whose subject of English wasn't their best subject. I was more of a math and science, but cultural. <laughs> so cultural appropriation is. Um, pretty much like using another culture for your own benefit and also like not, you know, crediting that other culture. Mm -hmm. um, there was an example of that with, um, I think it was, I think it was like a Marc Jacobs um, fashion show. Like, don't quote me on that. I think it was something like that where like a lot of the models, a lot of the runway models were wearing dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. And um I think uh, like the, the the fashion, like Mark Jacobs or whoever was the fashion person um, was saying like, didn't really credit, you know, like Africa or, or black culture or anything towards the, you know, towards the air or like, you know, they didn't like credit any of that. So like, <laughs> oh yeah, I got to watch that inherent good. Oh. <laughs> that, that's going to be good. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so they didn't like accredit that. So, you know, a lot of people got, you know, upset. Um, there's been a lot of other forms of like cultural appropriation, like um, what I've noticed, like oftentimes what happens is like, uh, like a goody two sheet, goody two shoes, um, like white uh, artists, like musical artists would like go to the bad side and start hanging out with rappers and twerking mm -hmm. And, you know, essentially like appropriate that um, like hip hop culture, which is usually deemed and stereotyped as negative, bad. Mm. And then essentially after a couple of years of, you know, of pretty much appropriating that culture, come back to like their goody two shoe side and they saw, seen the light and God and, you know, Jesus and everything. And then essentially just like dump all of those um, black artists as if like they didn't know them. Mm. Um, so that's another form of appropriation, which is, you know, very common. Like Eminem has a line that says like, um, like he did like Elvis Presley, use black music, make myself wealthy. Mm. Um, <laughs> and um, that's essentially like what I, you know, how I define like cultural appropriation. Um, essentially like what Elvis Presley did, where he essentially took black music and made it his own. Yeah, that, that's how I would define um, cultural appropriation. Toby, do you want to maybe define appreciation? Yes. So yeah, appropriation is pretty spot on there. Like you say, you benefit off of some culture, some yeah. something that's your own, that's not your own. Uh, oftentimes to the point where it's something that was looked down upon and then right. now all of a sudden you bring it to the limelight and it's trendy, it's something new. 
like with appreciation, usually you kind of highlight first and foremost where this thing came from. So if you got your hair in a certain style, you would highlight, you know, what community or culture this is from, if it's food, um, if it's like an authentic dress, you would do your best to honor those communities, make sure that the money goes back to those communities. I think another, actually, this was a hot topic now that I think about it from a few years ago. You had all these dashikis that were being made. I mean, people will still do it now, but especially I think with Black Panther and other things, it was super hot to just kind of like wear dashiki, but it was like, where is this actually coming from? Was it uh, like, was this sort of authentic, you know, African artist or whatever. I mean, a lot of times people just were with the culture that was cool, but it was kind of like, you know, are, are, I guess I would say that's more of appreciation, but sometimes even then you, the financial contributions aren't going back to maybe the community where the ideas came from. So appreciation would have the acknowledgement, it would have financial sort of investment a lot of the times, you know, they would often seek to lift up people whose voices were not heard as much or people who, were stifled, you know, maybe people who couldn't hair, wear their hair or wear certain things. Um, right, right. And I'm kind of keeping it vague here because there's a lot of examples to go into, but mm -hmm. I would say the appreciation is just that you are acknowledging that I didn't make this and other people maybe have actually been penalized for choosing to wear such item or express such culture. So that appreciation is a way of sort of lifting it up without you know claiming it as your own right right okay. and and i and i i guess that the reason why we should dive into this topic other than the fact that yes it's getting close to election season election time and so you're going to see a bunch of stuff that's going to play both sides but the the one thing that kind of stuck out was probably like maybe like a, a few months ago where Adele, she wore her hair in, in the Bantu nuts. And so a lot of people, hey, let's fix America, what's going on? Glad to have hey. you on the show. Hey. You know, and, and a lot of people that are kind of like, well, she has on Bantu nuts and, and da 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 da. And, and my thing, yeah, and, and my thing is this, like, I, I I don't follow Adele like that, but I know from the type of music and from the interviews that I have seen her in that she's more so on the lines of being appreciative mm -hmm. towards the black culture, that there, there's nothing that she would do to disrespect black people in general, you know? And, and most black folks love her because the songs that she writes, a lot of black people can vibe to them. A lot of White people could buy to so anybody could buy to her music because it, it touches it touches them in a way where it's like, man, I've been there, I've done that, I've lived through that. Like, girl, you singing my song, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when she had first went live into the live performance and actually won a Grammy. You know, you could see in her in her face that she really didn't feel honored to be there. But because of the love and, and the outpour towards her, it was like, holy crap, like, here I am. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I feel as though that's just, again, that's just one out of the many instances where, like, she, Adele, was more so appreciative of the Black culture and, and wanted to express that, especially in the height of what's going on in America today. Yeah, and I hadn't had a huge history with Adele. Um, mm -hmm. like I would say I'm not like a Adele super fan or Adele stan or anything like right. that. But, you know, I, yeah, sure, I've heard some of her songs and enjoyed it enough. Don't really know much about her personally, except there's a whole thing about you know, body image and weight loss. That there, There's a whole conversation around that. But I really didn't know much culturally in terms of her relationship to Black people, Black artists. But apparently where she lives is an area that has a lot of black people, in particular Jamaican. Yeah, um, I've heard that too. The Jamaican sort of immigrants and in, in the UK. So that does seem a very appropriate thing. If she wants to go ahead and do that, go ahead. Now, a lot of people were mad, like they were mad mad. But most of the comments that I could see like from her Instagram post, as well as comments I've seen elsewhere. And you know, a lot of Jamaican people, whether they're Jamaican American or whether they were kind of like 
Jamaican abroad. They seem to, you know, be, you know, was, they're proud. They said they loved it. It was open culture. They're glad to see it. Of course, people made jokes. There were a lot of meme pages right. making jokes, which is cool and everything. But like, it does seem that a lot of the people who really are from that culture saw it and, you know, they rocked with it pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, <laughs> yeah, I had some interesting thoughts about all that. And I was like, let me not, fi let me not start off a whole firestorm. But I did, I, I just, I, I was going to say, like, if the people who, I guess in this case, were targeted or they're sort of the target audience, if they're kind of cool with it, and what am I going to really say? Um, right. Mm -hmm. And I personally didn't have any negative feelings about it anyway. But especially if I see that a lot of Jamaican people are cool with that, then awesome. Um, I'm not going to make it my business to get offended for other people, which is <laughs> something... <laughs> I've seen really? before by a different group of people. Oh, but. yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, as a Jamaican-American, like, like when I first saw that picture, like, it was, like, tied to, like, like a meme. Like, somebody said, like, uh, a dog says, like, hello, on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and, I wow. was, like, and I thought that was just absolutely hilarious. Like, I didn't see mm -hmm. anything of it, like, you know, like, yeah, exactly. Like, um, what Holistic Hottie said, like, yeah, I was um, celebrating Carnival somewhere in, I, I believe it was London, somewhere in England. And, and, like, you know, England has like a massive Caribbean population, a massive like Jamaican population as well. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, it, it wasn't like odd. Like, you know, like, She's a musician. I'm sure she likes other types of music, including reggae. Like that's not odd at all. Like, um, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like I barely even like noticed the hair. I never really noticed hair anyway. So, but like, <laughs> I, you know, after a while, like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, she has the Bantu knots. Like, okay, but like, what is she supposed to do? Constantly hold up a sign saying like, I understand that this is like an African culture hair. Is that like, what is she? Like she's just out there enjoying her life. She's not hurting anybody. She's not like a right. Think, like, right. You know, like I thought at first people were upset because she was wearing like, um, like I think it was like a bikini top that was like the Jamaican flags, mm. the Jamaican flag, <laughs> and um, and, like I thought that's what like I didn't even like notice her hair at first, like, you know, like I I just don't see like like what the big deal was and right, like. I think it's sort of similar, I guess, like, going, like, further with, like, appreciation. I feel like it's similar to, like, like, if you see, like, you know, like, a white family, like, having, like, you know, dressing in, like, traditional Japanese, like, garb and, like, having, like, a Japanese, like, tea party, like, tea ceremony or something. And, you know, like, they're following the correct steps and, like, they're learning and, you know, and, like, enjoying themselves and, you know, embracing themselves in a different culture. Right. You know, I don't, I don't really see that, like, as a big deal. You know, like, I don't get mad when I see white people in a in a Jamaican restaurant, you know, <laughs> like, it's just, you know, you're just, like, liking and appreciating another culture, which, you know, is beautiful. Like, I agree. Right. I agree. You know, and that's Go ahead. Yeah, and that's another interesting thing too. Is like things are very global nowadays. Whether it's music, dance, I mean, it's pretty. Like I wouldn't say it's like the most common thing ever, but I've seen like white people. I remember even when I was an undergrad. I think I was a senior or junior, 2015 maybe. And I remember there was a white guy wearing like a dashiki. He was at like an African student association event on our campus, and he was like doing like some shucky or some dance, some African dance. And like everyone was going crazy, like, oh snap, you know, white boy got the moves, whatever. And mm -hmm. it's just like, this is cool. It's like, yeah, that's awesome. I would never think to be like, oh, how dare you wear this thing? Like, you know, he actually knows people. He actually, in fact, that's true appreciation because of this man, I remember, he literally went to Sierra Leone, which is in West Africa with another friend of mine. And it's just like, that, that's how you do it. You, you know that this place hadn't, this thing had an origin. You still engage in it. It's not from your culture. And we all have fun, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like, you know, it's like, who do you, like, it's like with Adele, it's like, what connections do you have? I'm sure like she has many of those friends. So it's mm -hmm. not like you kind of just airdrop in and say, ooh, let me just pick something off the map. Like you actually have some connection to what's there. Um, mm -hmm. And like, it's a very global world. Like I said, you're gonna have more people who are not your own culture kind of mm -hmm. engaging with it. And like there's respectful ways, there's definitely disrespectful ways, 
But yeah. see, just seeing that what she did and what this kind of happens in general, I think is okay. Now I know one contentious point is kind of like, I know I've heard in past years, people will say the term, my culture is not your costume, where people will dress up as some culture um, in ways that are very distasteful, whether it's putting on black fist, that's like a really big one that we've seen even like <laughs> random politicians like in friggin' Virginia had done yeah, decades ago. Seem to not be she, able to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, people seem to not be able to stop doing that. People seem to have just had done it in the past and now we find out about it. So it's just like, oh boy. Um, yeah. Another is like some of the Native American dress dresses like you're not, you know, you just kind of buy something random and say, oh yeah, Halloween, whatever. Um, you have those Cinco de Mayo or whatever Mexican events where, I mean, I've, I'm sure we've all worn sombreros and other things, but there are like these like maybe sorority or fraternity parties or other things where it's like, it's, it's a blurred line where it can just be like a gimmick where, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you have the sombrero. I remember people will say like, Drinko de Mayo or whatever. Yeah. And like, I, I've, I've laughed at some of these things, but at the same time, it's like, was there any Mexican person involved in the production of this? <laughs> if not, no. I don't know. Maybe um, think carefully. I mean, this, I, again, like I, I feel like what she had done was fine because she has that community there. But I do know that there is that general concept of, oh, my culture is not your costume where people mm -hmm. are doing it in a disgraceful sort of way, just like as a Halloween thing, you know, it's not like right. a true like Caribbean outfit, carnival outfit. It's not like something really for an occasion. It's just, hey, it's Halloween, I need a costume. Let me throw a dart at a country. Like if you want to be someone in particular, I think, if you're trying to be like, let's say a certain ruler, maybe some like specific kingdom or whatever, that's fine. Like I think if you're gonna dress up as like a specific historical figure, as long as you're not freaking like doing things with your face or like your eyes, you know, we all know what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Like no need right. to make yourself look more ethnic. That's fine. Right. But then if you're kind of trying to generally say, I am just like a ex today. Like if now if Adele had maybe had like, just say I'm randomly a Jamaican and had like. Yeah, like the, like the hat with the dreadlocks, the fake dreadlocks. Yeah. Like, and like, like, a, and like those, yeah, like, that is like, okay, yikes, <laughs> what are you doing? But it wasn't the case. So I, that's another thing I wanted to expand on because we are coming up on Halloween and of course COVID is going to make celebrations not really as, well, they're going to be more underground, but every year you have some story of some mm -hmm. brat and sorority or some other group doing something that they know they shouldn't have done. Martin Luther King parties with watermelon and black faces, like stop it. I've never even heard of that. Stop it. Like, I, actually that may have even happened on MLK day, but I remember hearing that a few years ago. So wow. be, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for foolishness, but that, that's why I just kind of wanted to <laughs> bring yeah. that aside. You said it. You said it. Foolishness. Yes, mm -hmm. foolishness is one of those things that leads to arrogance, and mm -hmm. quite frankly, ignorance because of the fact is like, okay, you're you're doing something, let alone representing something that clearly you have no clue about. And, and because you have no clue about it, you, you're you almost wanting to get that negative attention because, again, you just don't know or, you know, you're just that foolish that you don't care. And, and, and I think that the more you begin to experience different cultures and the more you begin to open yourself up to those cultures, mm -hmm. you get a better appreciation for that said culture. Like for instance, I I love Japanese food. I, I love it. I, I love sushi. I love anime. I love the culture. Mm -hmm. just, just due to the fact it's something different, but it's very unique in its own weird way. Very unique. You know, mm -hmm. and I've always told myself, told friends, family, you know, you guys heard it, that one day I want to travel to Japan and, and just be in the area and, and just, you know, bask in the culture, you know, and a lot of and a lot of people, whether, whether they believe it or not, a lot of the younger generation of Japanese, they kind of look towards African-Americans and get inspiration from them. And so... Mm -hmm from there is like they appreciate the um the black culture and they kind of like make it 
their own in a way, but it's very unique. And they do it in a very respectful manner. And it's like, cool. You know, I can ride with that. I, I could I could dig that. I mean, L, you lived in Japan, you know. Well, I, I visited Japan, but like that just kind of reminded me of this yeah. um, this time because I was using Tinder in Japan. And like mm -hmm. one of the guys' profile said like, I love black culture. Oh, boy. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like, you can't really be like, it's like, okay, like I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. Uh, um, Actually, um, to Meta Jabon's uh, question, I actually have been like offended by a costume I saw in person. Um, it was like I was at like this um this Halloween party, which was it was kind of surprising that it happened because it was like right in the middle of like a almost a hurricane, but nobody knew that it was because it was like the most South Florida thing ever. Like there was a tropical storm that nobody really cared or knew about. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I went to like this Halloween party and like there was like this guy who was dressed in like, you know, like, like a typical stereotypical, like Native American kind of clothes. And, but it was like one of those things where it's like, should I feel offended? Cause you know, like I'm not Native American. Or it's like one of those things like, well, nobody's Native American. So what, how, you know, how should I feel? Like, uh, like if somebody does something racist and nobody, of that race is around there to see is it really racist you know <laughs> yeah it, it, that, okay. that area oh man yeah that's funny yeah but, but it, no it, like it, it was i just felt kind of like oh like maybe it was just like a like he, he probably just had that costume for years and he just wears that every year like i, I don't know i don't know i think he needs to update his selection wardrobe yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and i'll probably i'll tap into that one too meta job on good question mm -hmm. and i would say when i was living in colorado springs and of course at, at my job we couldn't dress up per se but we were able to, to kind of like you know go away from the traditional tire so of course I worked at a bank and so we were able to kind of like, you know, dress up where we didn't have to have masks on and everything else, but it was more so, you know, fun, you know, got into it and everything else. And I, I remember one guy, he he came in in, in a costume. I, I, I won't put like, he came in a Donald Trump costume. And oh, wow. yeah, and what made it worse was like, the whole outfit itself it was like really, eh. like you you could have went down Walmart and find any costume in the world, and, and you settled on a truck costume, and, and I'm like, man, come on, come on, man, you got to do better than that. You got to do better than that. You should have done better than that. Hey. Uh, yeah. Ran random fun fact. Um, so. Like for like some of the people who like predict who the next president's going to be, sometimes they also ask like Halloween costume stores, like Spirit Halloween, and if like and like they they pick Trump to win for twenty sixteen because a lot of people bought Trump masks that year. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. Ugh. I, I was like, man, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. Off of Trump. I can't deal with him off the Trump. Yeah. I mean, like, it is interesting. It's like, I guess, in a way, like, a Trump costume can be, like, offensive because he is pretty offensive. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll bring, it'll be a strong stimulus. Like, I've wanted to make, like, little jokes because my humor can be very, like, like, I, I don't get offended a lot, even if it's something that I know is, like, not really good. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't personally tr go out of my way to make offensive jokes. But, like, even on um, April Fool's, I wanted to, like, Masquerade. I wanted to get like a fake MAGA hat, wear it, make a little post about how I was so proud in 2016 to have voted for Trump, <laughs> and I'm excited again to vote this year in 2020. I, I told one friend, she was like, "Yeah, you're gonna like get blocked," and not for by her, but she was like, "You can do that. You probably lose a lot of friends, and people will just jump because it's it just is a, a big trigger for people that it's like." <laughs> They will actually believe me and be like, wait, do you know me? Do you actually think that that's what I did in 2016? Um, but that's a different story. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think Matt Jabo, you made a, a good point where he is, where he said that it's amazing when I see cultural things from Asia, like K-pop and anime get really embraced by non-Asian people of color. And, and that is correct because again, you know, with Asia, Korean, and especially with, with more so the Korean music, a lot of them, they trace their roots back to the early stages of hip hop. Like they've named mm -hmm. some of, the, some of the, the greatest, like Biggie Smalls, Tupac, Jay-Z, when he was, you know, still like making music that wasn't cringeworthy. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, well, okay. All right. Tell us how you really feel, Ron. Well, I know. I was, say. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. like, like, I'll, I'll put it to you guys. Like, this has to be another episode. Cringeworthy? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it to you guys like this. The last Jay Z album that I bought that I actually really enjoyed was the um, the American Gangster album that he put that he put out. Okay. That one was like, yeah, I could listen to that one all day, every day, no problem. Anything after that? Nah. That's fair. Like, no. yeah, because it was after Black Album was what Kingdom Come, and that wasn't really that good. No. But American Gangster was pretty good, yeah. 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 Okay. And, 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 you know, a, a lot of the Korean um, hip hop artists, they give their, their props to the, the early pioneers of hip hop. I mean, I seen one guy give mention to Big Daddy Kane. I'm like, wait a minute, you know about Big Daddy Kane and, and hip hop in, in Korea? <laughs> Like, what's really going on? Right. You know, yeah. What you know about this? Yeah, but 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 again, you know, it 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 it, it like we were talking about it. They made it a point to be appreciative of the music due to the fact they realized that how different it was and, and how you know they could put different sounds together and, and make. A, a catchy tune that even after it left your brain, it was still there. You know, I, I remember watching the color of K-pop like years ago, and one of the guys, he he was rapping, but he rapped to the beat of um, Pete Rock and see us move Troy. They reminisce over you. He rapped over that. I'm like, what? And he was killing it. Like I don't I don't know what he said in Korean, but man. He was dropping bars. I'm like, oh, like I gotta get there now. Like you make me want to go back, dust the, the dust off all of my old CDs and just listen to them because of the fact that it was, you know, nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, like like uh, some of the the R and B artists. In, uh, in in K pop, you know, a lot of them they give homage to those R and B groups, especially like I know Meta Jabo said, like in sync, like yeah, mm -hmm. and the Backstreet Boys, yeah, you know, uh, we we even say like old school hip hop, like not old school, but like the R and B groups, like um, Jagged Edge, One Twelve, Drew Hill, you know, a lot of them got their inspirations from those groups, and mm -hmm. it was, you, and you could tell because. The way how the music sounds, the way how the lyrics goes, you can think back like, okay, I can see uh, Drew Hill doing this, or I, I can see Jody Speed doing that, you know? And you see that question there, Tuesday. This yeah. is very interesting. Is it appropriation when an all white group tries to make it as a K pop group in Korea? Huh. Yeah, you know, I don't follow K-pop like that. And like you were saying, K-pop is already like very heavily influenced and borrowed, borrowing, you know, a lot of the hip hop scene. So it's like, okay, <laughs> white group trying to make it this. I mean, I don't know an example if that's something that's happened. I I just think that's an interesting like level of detachment. Like you have K-pop mimicking certain things from America and when white people have been mimicking the K-pop. Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I'm not gonna say it's diluted, but it's just interesting like how many levels are being removed at that point. Like, I mean, are they speaking Korean? Are they going and going with like that look and style that a lot of the K-pop groups have? I'm a little bit unambiguous. Um, that's interesting. 
I really don't. Like, I have to get more hip into. Um... I mean, hey, if they're doing their thing, I think. And, I, think and, 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 I mean, you guys are are dropping. I mean, the chat. You, you guys are dropping knowledge because, like, yeah, EXP edition. I never knew. I never heard of them at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really follow K-pop really. I just know like BTS because their name keeps yeah, coming yeah, up yeah, everywhere. Yeah, Which yeah. is break the sound. Just break the sound. I thought it was behind the scenes the whole time. It was break the sound. <laughs> I had no idea what this stood for, to be honest. <laughs> I like break yeah, you know, the sound. Boy. You know, my, my wife, she she likes the, um, the group to anyone. And a lot of their music is like, okay. Like I could get with that, you, you know, and there, there's one group that their name slips my mind, but they they have a song that they performed and, and that was fire. All girl group. I'm like, oh snaps! Like I can see Destiny Child's doing that. I can see um, Black doing that. The, the girl group Black doing that. <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah, can tell my age going back. <laughs> um, you know, just giving homage to 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 those early pioneers. Mm -hmm. And question from the chat. I know I do. Yes. Yeah. I've right. have I've been like slacking on watching anime. But um yeah. Yeah, like I still kind of do. I've been trying to like watch Firestar. I heard it's like really good. Like um but I got into anime from like Tsunami, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon. Yeah. Like, like, remember when Sailor Moon used to come on, like in the mornings, like oh getting goodness. ready for school. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, like the local channels that just happened to be on. Yeah. Like yeah. I, was, yes. I was a kid, child, child. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's how I got in, like Sailor Moon. Um, yeah. Fun fact: like, if I'm feeling down, I like to put on the Sailor Moon theme song. That always gets me feeling better. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that actually is funny you mentioned that, L, because I knew when it was time for me to get ready for school and when my, my step grandmother before she passed, she took me and my brother, my stepsister to school. Sailor Moon would come on. Mm -hmm. I knew that by the time the theme song for Dragon Ball Z came on on the local channel, when that theme song came on, I had to be looking out the window to make sure she was pulling up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If I was able to get through the whole thing fog and into like the first five, 10 minutes of the show, I know I'm going to be in some deep trouble because either she's already blown a horn a few times and then took off or she's already blown a horn. Oh, yeah. They had it down to a science. <laughs> had it down to a science. And literally, that was the one thing that, that got me into uh, to, to anime. And mm -hmm. then it goes from there. Like, I remember watching um, Akira. Yeah, as a, as a kid, like yes, and then from there, watching Appleseed, watched um, the old school Gundam, like um, mm. Gundam, um, what was that? Like One old Gundam, huh? Is it just G Gundam? Was that it was, was a Gundam Wing before Gundam Wing. It was, um, I think it was G Gundam or just Mobile Suit Gundam. Gundam. No, it was another like like real old school, like like old school, old school Gundam. I think I know what you're talking about. I don't know the name of it, but I think it was, wasn't it just called Mobile Suit Gundam? Oh, yeah. Mobile Suit Gundam, maybe that could be. That sounds like a pretty. I think, I think it was just mobile, yeah, I think it was just Mobile Suit Gundam. Mobile Suit, and then there was um, it's a, there's another one. There, there's another one. It's a uh, Mobile Suit um one yeah. one one eighty eight. I think I don't that know. Was, yeah. yeah. Someone said beta in the chat. Um, I don't know. I personally didn't. I didn't get into anime until relatively late because I know like Toonami and some others played it. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I know I'm, I'm, I'm. I guess I'm like the young and quote unquote. Um, I remember ugh, Toonami playing maybe like what Naruto. I didn't, I wasn't personally watching it, but when I got to college, 2012, I remember I was playing a video game. Naruto Ninja Storm. Those the people who know me know I really loved that game. I loved Naruto. <laughs> that was like my first love. It was basically playing that game, got me to start reading the manga, and oof, it was game over come winter. That for that winter, I had no life yeah. besides reading. And yeah. and I mean it was cold. I was home. What else was I gonna do? I had other things, but I already had like 400 plus chapters in the span of a 
maybe four week period. No Whoa. shame. No shame. No, no, none uh, whatsoever. And then I started watching it a little bit, started reading Bleach the next year. Hack and Titan, I started watching later that year. So I had a phase where throughout college, I was into it a lot. By the time I graduated 2016, it was already fading off. And sadly, since then, I haven't really kept up, um, which like, you know, it's interesting because I was not like, oh, I'm going to claim Japanese culture because I know like there are those, I mean, you have the term kind of derogatory, but like the weeaboo, otaku, otaku is the other one where it's just like, you think you're Japanese because you like your anime and you eat ramen and you go to conventions and maybe you're into like some of the, the mechatronics and the Gundam culture now you're Japanese and it's like yikes I mean <laughs> I know people like have I mean there's nothing wrong with getting more interested in some of the culture because of that some people yeah. go to Japan because they want to see it and they got kind of sparked by some anime that had certain things you know they, they depict certain things in their shows like obviously we're not just talking about the crazy like no one's talking about casting jutsus in Japan but like even some of the more normal um, real life type anime, there's a culture to it that in, that intrigues people. So yes. then they want to kind of experience it, which I think yeah. is pretty cool. Yes. Um, I, I I remember one article of someone who was claiming to be trans ethnic. If I can find that article, I'll have to post it later. But someone was claiming that they were trans ethnic, maybe like in 2014 or something, and how they went on this journey and now they were gonna become Japanese because they just love the culture. And it's like, yeah, this is an example of what not to do. Um, but, but yeah, so that was just me kind of tying it back into the appreciation. That's definitely appreciation. I will always appreciate anime and some of those other cultures. I feel like video games too probably brought me into anime as well. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like to say, like I I was probably playing video games before I learned how to read, you know, like, you know, like Super Mario Brothers, you know, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. (sighs) Um, yes. Yes. And that, you know, it has like that Japanese um, anime esque kind of flair, Chrono Trigger for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Secret of Mana. Like, of course. Oh, I had that. <laughs> yeah. I, I had that. You know, you might as well just throw in Final Fantasy. You just keep on going down the line. I mean, like, Final Fantasy VII, I actually never finished it but i know how it ends and yeah um but but yeah like what else yeah like i was i don't know i guess it's just always been like a part like i guess like anime japanese culture has always kind of like been a part of us like like especially through video games and like watching toonami and sailor moon in the mornings yes yeah pokemon like will come on at 4 p.m after school yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, like Toonami, you got the Dragon Ball Z on Toonami that came like around about like 5, 5 30. It then you had to be on it because when you go to school the next day, exactly. you the next episode, like what was the finishing move that Vegeta did when he was facing so and so? You better get it right because this dude says one thing, he's saying another thing. I'm like, I don't know. Final <laughs> plan? Are you done? <laughs> There's a whole lot that I wasn't hip to, to be honest. Yeah, but yes, I, I mean, the the appreciation of anime in in a Japanese culture is it's so unique. Like I get in arguments when when people say, "Oh, anime is is is, is a cartoon." Like, no, it's not. Like, yeah. no. Anime has its own unique, it's like, like it's like its own avenue, you know. Yes, like and the and the lumping in as a cartoon, like nah, nah. Yeah. Car- cartoons, they're they're two D, they're some of them one dimensional, and everything else. But when it comes to anime, <laughs> it's 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 literally they they base it off of something real. It's very much realistic, even though. Some of the other stuff is a little far fetched, but still, it happens, you know. Mm-hmm. And trying to sit down and explain that is like it's nerve wracking, and, and I get heated. Oh, I get real passionate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I do. Like it's definitely under 
like the umbrella of like, you know, just like animation, you know, because of like, you know, there's also like CGI animation shows, mm-hmm. anime and the cartoons, but like, I guess like with anime, I feel like they you do use like a more realistic approach when it comes to creating their characters. Like, you know, like they look a little bit more realistic aside from like maybe like their eyes and in mm. some cases like their breasts. Yeah. But, <laughs> but like but for that, the most and surface. <laughs> but like for the most part it's like you know these people are kind of like realistic they're not like they're not in the style of like cartooning like it is like mm-hmm. you know like Ren and Stimpy is like in, <laughs> in the US or like you know like Steven Universe is still like cartooning that's, that's yeah. cartooning <laughs> yeah yeah I, I hear you I hear you let's see Manager Job only says how do you guys feel about Eminem getting so much stardom Man, I, I remember Eminem coming out when I was in grade school. But Eminem, in my opinion, he he kind of changed the game. This, mm-hmm. he, changed, he changed the rap game and and literally flipped it on his head. And what, what made Eminem so interesting was the fact that he he was rapping about stuff that happened in his life, but he made it funny. But then again, there were some songs where it was kind of serious, where it had a more so serious tune to it, and and you almost had to kind of like take a step back and be like, okay, what was going on in his life that made him write this song, you know? Mm -hmm. Like one I could think about, you know. Ben? Yeah, yeah, from Michigan, yep. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And and, and a lot of stuff that he he, uh, he written about was from his life, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I'll put it to y'all like this. Till this day, I still won't drive down 8 Mile. No. I, I will drive past the act, the, the exit, going to Detroit. Nope. I won't get off on it. Mm-mm. No. So what exactly is 8 Mile? Okay. So so 8 Mile is is this stretch. Is it 8 Detroit. Miles? Huh? Is it 8 Miles? It, it's the name. It's like, it's it's the name of the road. It's called 8 Mile Road. You got 7 Mile Road. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but... Eight Mile, Eight Mile Road is one of those streets where you don't want to be on at night. You, 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 you because it's it's probably one of the roughest places in Detroit. Period. Wow. You, you know a lot of the <clears throat> the abandoned houses like he kind of did. And if you guys remember the movie Eight Mile, the, the actual movie uh-huh. in Eight Mile. Like a lot of the homes, they're like that. They're boarded up, they're abandoned. A lot of the businesses are gone. Um, and again, that was pretty much at the height where GM was, was still making money and they were still having people. But you go there now, you know, a, a lot of other those people that work for GM, they're out of a job. Mm. You know, a lot of the, the the city workers, they're out of a job, you know, and he brings that to light. And so with his stardom, he kind of brought attention, ooh, excuse me, to what was going on in Detroit at that time, you know, and, and still to this day, he, he kind of does, but it, but it's more so like, hey, we still got issues that are going on here. We still got problems that's going on here. Besides my own issues, my but my own problems, but you know, people in Detroit need help. You know, people in Flint, they need help. People in Saginaw, they need help. Mm-hmm. And he uses that to to amplify what's going on in other states, you know. And so with him having that platform. And, and like I said, kind of changed the, the rap game from what it was into what he had his best years from like what the early two thousands, probably up until like I, I would say like possibly 2010, 2011. You know, probably those were like a big good chunk of years that hip hop was and rap was actually good. Mm-hmm. But even still, it was like after that, in my opinion, now my opinion, that's when it took a nosedive. And, and people started coming in, clearly should not have gotten a record deal. And 
you know, ran off with it. Mm. You know, and again, my opinion, right. my opinion, you know. Um, Anybody else want to take a stab at it? No, I I definitely agree that Eminem came in and like just flip, you know, like the like hip hop and like what you can do with it, like, you know, mm -hmm. on its head. Um, I never felt like, you know, I I would say, you know, he's one of the greatest rappers alive. No, the great one of the greatest rappers that ever have lived. Um, uh, I don't feel any sort of way for him getting his stardom. Like, you know, he worked hard for it. Like, he's a he's a phenomenal rapper. It's not like he sucks and is just famous for being white. You know, like he's a phenomenal rapper. Like, that's a vanilla. Like, like, <laughs> like usually, like a lot of like some people. You know, there are like some black people, like not as much anymore. I don't think who don't who don't like Eminem because he's white and like. You're the minority, like you know, you could stay over there with your dumbass opinion, right? But like, <laughs> but um, like what what you were saying about um Eight Mile, like it kind of made me made me think that maybe like Eminem probably opened the door for like, you know, like um, I guess like rural America, middle America, mm -hmm. um, to probably start liking and appreciating rap music as well, because they, mm -hmm. you know, he was talking about you know, his life, you know, and how rough it was. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure like a lot of, especially like rural white Americans could probably relate to that. Yes. Like in a way, and you know, I was, I'm just like, you know, realizing this now. It's like, yeah, he is from Michigan. Like, you know, <laughs> like, I didn't really mm -hmm. like think of that. Yeah. You, you know, in like um, a, a lot of people, especially like the, the white rappers that, you that's from the United States, they, they give credit to Eminem, you know, because of the fact that had he not do or did what he did when he at first came in, a lot of them would not have given it, would not have gotten the chance to do so. And, and in all honesty, because of the fact of him I don't want to necessarily say be a great rapper, but more so like a great lyricist. Mm -hmm. and, and it was able to kind of string things together in a way where you literally had to take a, a step back, hit pause, rewind, listen to what he said again. And we're like, oh, that's what he said. Yeah. And then you think about it a little bit more like, how in the world did he have the creativity to do? that it's insane it's insane you know insane. And, and especially when um he, he did the, the the song renegade with jay-z mm -hmm. the, the his verse in itself was like what yeah his, his verse is my favorite in the, in the song that's yeah. like one of my favorite songs it's like wow m Wow, M, like you you did that. Like you smashed on Jay-Z's own song. Like mm -hmm. who in the world could ever do that and, and still be able to kind of have somewhat, I don't know, good terms, if, if you if you want to call it that. You know, <laughs> again, it, it, it it's weird to say, but at the same time, you, you think about it, and it's like, yeah, all right, he was just that good uh, of a lyricist to be able to do that and, and still, you know, still have kudos, not only which is with white America, but also with black America as well, because black folks love them. Yeah. Whether, whether they want to admit it or not, they did. As right. of now, I don't know. Like, you know, like, you know, like, I feel like this is like, you know, a good um, example of just like cultural appreciation because mm -hmm. it's not like Eminem ever like just like shit it on Black America, you know. Like he he's like spoken about white America. He's like he's very political too, you know. He has, you know, like that song Mosh and everything. And yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and also like I think he like he dissed Donald Trump. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I I was like I feel like I've heard that. But, like oh yeah, but that's not surprising from him because he he's very like. You know, he definitely keeps his ears to the streets, you know, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. But um but 
Yeah. Like, I feel like that, like he's definitely, you know, appreciative. Like he went on, you know, Dr. Dre's, um, like, a, a record. Um, what was it? Like his, his, I don't know, like the app, like his studio. Um, aftermath. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. like Aftermath is on his Eminem. Um, <clears throat> but, but yeah. So something I actually thought about, about was kind of what you said, great example of appreciation. He didn't go ahead and like claim it as when bashing it with one hand, but you know, it's not like he bashed in one hand rap and then tried to like all of a sudden come up and use it um, to get famous. And I know that like, I mean, the reason why maybe some people feel some type of way, and this is kind of like a broader theme when it comes to the appreciation appropriation thing is things that were seen negatively um, whether it's like the dreadlocks and the hairstyle, because that's one thing um, there's been examples of. The, the hair is a big one, but mm -hmm. I think the reason why maybe some people were like, oh, they're not feeling Eminem or they feel some type of way is they might see rap degraded or they see it talked about a certain way. Then Eminem comes and now suburbia and white America all of a sudden they're hip. And now it's like, oh, yeah, rap. Um, yeah. But I think like it's for the better when that happens, just because mm -hmm. at least it exposes to another audience. Um, now, with some of the, the natural hair, and that's kind of like a, a separate topic, but it's related when there will be people who wear, white people who wear dreads or they wear cornrows. I mean, we had to deal with the Bantu knots. And then there are people who've been like denied opportunities who are black. Like yeah. I have to give a few quick examples because it is kind of ridiculous. I have no animus, no bad feelings. And I think it's fine if people do want to wear these type of styles, but the reason why it kind of touches some nerves, because there are people who just think like cultural appropriation, the topic of, is ridiculous, people should be able to do whatever, but there's very valid reasons why people kind of feel some type of way, because when you have examples like, I remember hearing about a woman who had like dreads or some natural style, and I was talking about this before the show, but like, they're working at a call center, you know, customer service, no one can see who you are, yet they were told they had to like change their hair or be fired, and I need to find sort yeah, of the link. Though. And it's just like, wow. So you really are just like, you know, long blonde hair and straight hair is fine, but if the hair is too kinky, you're done. Yeah. Are you serious? There was like a Six Flags guy. Um, I think he was he was a 16 year old or so who was trying to apply to Six Flags. They said that he would have to cut his hair because he had like dreads. And actually he ended up getting like a modeling job. Now he has like tens of thousands of followers on Instagram. I think the Six Flags apologized and said, oh, we actually would give it to you. But at that point, it's too late. <laughs> yeah, now you just want to use them for his fame. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like things like that will happen. And then people will be like, oh, wow. So Kardashians or the Jenners can wear their hair in a certain way. But then if, you, if black people do, they're called ghetto, ratchet, whatever. So that's usually why just at a high level, people can feel when white people maybe start doing something that was popular among black people and then they get praised for it. That's why sometimes black people will feel some type of way. Um, but personally, again, I think it's cool to see it picked up and it kind of normalizes the mainstream. I mean, that shouldn't be the thing that makes it normal or mainstream, okay. um, but that's just kind of how it is in society. Um, oh, Ender. Yes, the Crown Act is probably what this is referring to. Yeah. California was one of the first states, if not the first one, to say that you can't be discriminated against by your hair. And hey, hey. Jeannie, what's you. Up? But yeah, it's it's crazy to like see that. Oh wow, like I, I forgot, maybe thirteen states or maybe even less have formally have laws in the books. Then there's some other tens of states that are considering passing something, and then there's a bunch that just. Nothing. So if now I've actually heard from a friend of mine who's pretty liberal, who I mean, he's not black, he's Indian, but he was saying that he personally thinks it's better that companies instead of forcing the companies to be regulated to not discriminate against hair, just have the companies do it. And then they'll be put on blast, I guess, if they do, because otherwise the, the caution is they can find another reason to discriminate against you. Now, that logic, though, can apply to any discrimination. You know, and we wouldn't have, you know, the Civil Rights Act with, you know, no racial discrimination. We wouldn't have the Equality Act or even what the Supreme Court just upheld a few months ago where you can't be d discriminated against by your gender identity orientation. And I feel like it is important to have those protections on the books, even if, yes, there might be some workaround where a company will decide to do what they want and come up with a new fake reason. 
Um, I think it is good to just say the company decided to take a stand and say, yeah, we're not going to do this. It highlights it too, because a lot of people don't either know or people won't believe that this actually happens. Like, oh, it's 2020, it's 2019, it's whatever. This stuff doesn't happen, but it's like, yes, it clearly it does. So it's good to have it formally <clears throat> on the book. Oh yeah, mindful skeptics. Yeah. Um, it's, that's the crazy thing, right? It's. I, I mean, like, I think it, it's a good idea to have a written law because like this also would ideally protect people like in schools, you know, cause like there are, there are kids who are like in middle school, high school with dreadlocks mm -hmm. and they get discriminated against and like, you know, you know, told to change their hair or what have you, mm -hmm. because, you know, I guess it's distracting other students from learning. But um, so like, I think it would be like a good idea just to have kind of just like some sort of written law. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear it. But, but yeah, like, I, um, I, I think it'd be a good idea for it to just be just across the board, just like, hey, don't discriminate people, you know, like against their hair. Oh, yeah. Because it's okay. like not, it wouldn't just necessarily be like, you know, black hair, which, will, you know, is probably what it's most likely targeting, but also people who, you know, dye their hair blue. You know, like yeah, that's not gonna make yeah. me learn less because uh, your hair's blue. <laughs> yeah, you know, like right, yeah. right. You know, and yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and, and you'll be surprised. Like I know here in Michigan, a a lot of places they may not come out openly and say it, but. In mindful skeptics, you can probably back me up on this one too. But there's just some places where, depending on where you go, and depending on the atmosphere, you kind of get that weird look where it's like, "Really, you're gonna wear that here in this establishment?" Like, I've worked hard. I can do whatever I want to do. Get my hair done however I want to do it. And if I'm going to pay you for your services you're not gonna deny me for it, but you still have people who do it today. Like for example, my wife, she she's natural. She's been natural for like, she's almost nine, 10 years. She's been natural for about 10 years, you mm -hmm. know? And there's certain places where she goes to and they will look at her hair and be like, how can we only get your hair done? Like I just did my hair. It's called a wash and go. It's like, uh, oh, yeah. And, and they're like, oh, well, it, it's too nappy. You got to do it done. You got to get it done. And da, 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 da. The, the one job that she had, she she almost quit because of the fact they told her to do something with her hair or she wasn't going to work. Like, are you serious? Like, she's natural. Like, you're not gonna, you, you can't just like not deny her from working. She got to eat. She got to make a living. You know, that's insane. It's it's insane. It is, but it happens. Yeah. It happens. You know, and, and and yes, you know, it is sad that we live in a part of time where we have to have laws that's going to protect, you know, people's hair. And, and protect them from, you know, doing whatever. But at the same time, it, it's like, man, come on now. It's hair. Mm -hmm. it, 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 if people don't want to have that long, blonde, straight hair, they shouldn't have to get that. They should be able to rock whatever hair that they have mm -hmm. and, and feel appreciative that, hey, you're beautiful for whatever you're wearing. You're, you're beautiful if you have dreads. You're beautiful if you if you have cornrows. You're beautiful if you're wearing a fro. You know, you're beautiful if you got the, the kinky twist. I mean, I can start naming hairstyles galore, you know. Right, right. But still, you're beautiful no matter what you're wearing. I don't think it necessarily, like, I, I definitely agree what you're saying, Ron. Mm -hmm. um, just to go a little further, like, I don't think it necessarily has to just even be, like, beauty, you know. It's just, like... I mean, of course, like, you know, hair, like, you know, all natural hair is beautiful. Like, I, I definitely agree. It's more so like, it's so professional, you know, like you're not any less professional right. with an afro, right. you know, you're not any less professional, you know, with bantu nets, with dreadlocks, with, you know, kinky twist, with anything. Right. You know, you're yeah. not, you're not less professional if you're bald either. 
So yeah. In fact, yeah. some people see that as more professional. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not even going to get to that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Love you, boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, um, but like, because like we like people have like this perception of what a woman should look like, especially or like you know, what a professional should look like. It's like, I guess, you know, that also takes into account the hair. So I guess if people are so used to seeing like straight hair, straight hair, straight hair, straight hair, straight hair. Um, and like, even like, I guess on TV, when they see like maybe black women with straight hair, like Kerry Washington or something like that, then they're just like, oh, professional woman, straight hair. That's what I've always seen. That's all I know. So when you give me something I don't know, then I just don't know how to act <laughs> pretty much. Agreed. Agreed. It's yeah, it's a mix of like the you see everything, you see what you know, and then when you're exposed to something you don't know, it's like you don't know how to process it. And which is just like, okay, well, you know, things exist besides this like narrow subset of exactly. professional straight hair, whatever. But also it's kind of like a mind your business type thing. Like if you have yeah. someone with straight, if you have someone with whatever hair, what was that to you? Like if exactly. I remember seeing something when all these talks about you know racial justice were going on really in June, July, I remember people were talking about discrimination in the workplace or just like not even discrimination, but like people who literally it can't function as much because people want to like go in and touch your hair. We're gonna have to have another topic solely on black hair, but we all know we all know what these things are. I haven't had it happen to me. Um, I had it happen to people me. want to be like, oh, can I touch your hair? Or oh, your hair is so big, it's so distracting. Like, oh my gosh, I have to focus on it. Are you a whole museum? It's like, oh my goodness. I thought I was here to do my job, not be an exhibit A, but okay. Um, no, I've had so. that. I've had that happen. Like, you have waves? Like, how long did it take you to do your hair? Like, not long at all. Jumped in the shower, washed my hair, threw, threw some conditioner in it, got some blue magic, brushed my hair in a wave, threw a do rag on there. By the time I got to work, took it all. So I wouldn't have the do rag lines in my hair and everything mm -hmm. else. You know, that's it. Can I touch your hair? Like, mess up the waves? I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm at work. I'm on the clock. I don't know if my manager will approve of that. I think she'd be all right. Like, look at my manager. She's like, uh, no. Like, thank you. No. No. <laughs> but, but, it, but, it, it is, and again, it, it's just that is like, can I touch your hair? Can I touch your hair? It just looks so different. It's wavy. Like, oh my gosh. Like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I drown if they get too close. That part. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. That part. That part. I've, I've heard people say, oh, I get seasick when looking at your hair like, I bet you do. I bet you do. <laughs> That's I'm, not you. I'm not going to save you. I'm not going to throw you no life jacket. You might just drown. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Oh man, let me stop. But yeah, probably black hair. We'll, we'll probably have to have a separate episode for that. Um, I do like the mindful skeptics thing about more minor minority owned businesses, yes. which is also another good thing to talk about is in general the whole concept of minority owned businesses and black wealth. Um, a lot of things that all connect as we see. Topics are never isolated. Everything kind of leads into something else. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Yes, I mean, I'm gonna keep, that the <laughs> keep that on the hush. But again, you know, any guys, last thoughts, comments, whatever the case may be, before we pull the plug in preparation for getting ready for tomorrow because I know people got to work and whatnot. Mm. Oh, yeah. All too real. I don't think there was any questions we missed. Any questions? No. Yeah. Well, if nothing further, we thank you guys for, for dropping in, for, for stopping by. Always appreciative. <clears throat> and yeah. if you haven't done so, please drop a like, comment. Uh, if you have not subscribed, subscribe. Uh, smash the notification bell so you guys know when we're going live. And thank you guys for the conversations, for the questions in the chat. You guys are awesome. Gang, gang, we love you. 
Um, oh. Yeah, for sure. Yes, for sure. Ooh, ooh. I had to make a part. I may have to make a part two on that one. Yeah. Yes. That's actually a very real topic. That yeah, the whole mixed. That's a specific one with the parents. Yes, where you have a white parent with black children, kind of teaching them. Yeah, that's a really really good one. A hundred percent. Mhm. 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 Agreed. So. You guys, and again, thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, we're always here on Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then wherever you guys are at in the middle, that's where you guys can catch us. So until next week, Tuesday, this is McCoy. We're signing off. Peace, love, and all the other chicken grease, hair grease, and all the other good stuff. <laughs> Until <laughs> <laughs> so next time, you guys take care. All right. Good night. See you all next week. Good night. Good night.